The story begins with our protagonist confused and having argument with the twins' brother and sister in the hallways of their residence, crying as she want to get along with the twins, but being different with red hair. The twins are upset with her, and at that time, as they are still a child, they didn't know what an illegitimate really meant. And but since the twins heard it from the nanny, they make our protagonist feel bad with their hurtful words. At that time, his brother accidentally pushed her down of the stairs, making a huge commotion in the household. As a six years old child, that accident make her life change forever. No, she didn't die at the accident, and it did leave a scar, and she is considered completely fine. But the problem is that, ever since that day, her soul frequently leaves her body. Whenever she faint and fall asleep, her soul leaves. As she has always been full of curiosity, 24 years old, Marshall wandering at night with her soul body. As she is thinking what to do today, as a lady with Nobel status, means her actions are restricted, but with this state, no one would notice her doing what she wanted. While wondering, she recall what she did two days ago. She went to the mountain and enjoy the bard song at the market yesterday. But then, she stopped as she shocked to see her brother sneaking out going to the gambling den again. She complained that his brother is already 26 years old and the oldest son of her family, but didn't matured yet. She have no choice but to perform her skill. Aside from separating her soul to her body, she can also possess and control the bodies of humans and animals. This skill is not for everyone. Since her brother is easily get scared, this method work well on him. She makes sure to leave a note threat to her brother before leaving to keep him from sneaking out for a while. In the window, she noticed she'd been wondering how many times she'd seen the sun rise and set and thinking as a legitimate child with red hair and strange abilities. She is happy and enjoying her life in her own way. In the next day, our protagonist inside the room, her sister Valerie asking for help picking of a good match as her husband. Valerie, 22 years old, fall in love with Marquis Baron's eldest son, and they heir to be married. But two nights before their wedding, our protagonist accidentally find out that the Marquis' son has hidden family already, and for the sake of Lydian's power, he is willing to to marry as this marriage will solve all of his problem. But our protagonist stopped this and told her sister using her ability. Now, her sister picking a good match. Our protagonist tell her that it impossible to for her to find a man with no flaws. Which shock her sister as she angrily ask her if she would just hand her to some man like a Lefevre. And if she still resent her of what happened back then. She calm her sister in thinking that maybe her parents are upset because of their three children's each flaws. Valerie excitedly think the upcoming party and the returning home of the soldier and encourage our protagonist to find their husband at the party. And this party unknown to our protagonist that this would start to turn her entire life upside down. At the party our protagonist having a hard time with his heavy dress is looking the whereabout of her sister Valerie and she find out that Valerie forgot her and having a great time with her friends. She decided to look for food while being upset with her sister forcing her to come but ignore her. She is looking to the beautiful cakes and pastries in the table and start to eat when they announce the arrival of the promised princess, her royal highness, Princess Sash von de Fay. Our protagonist intrigued with this girl as she is famous and brought the century-long war to end. She offered a helping hand without discriminations from both sides. Alongside with her is his majesty nephew, who led the imperial army through north, and the second guest of honor, Duke Tamex Ludvillian, who they say under his command the forces suffered least casualties. Our protagonist, seeing them together, realized that they are peace and no longer at war. With that, the crowd excitedly rushed to the two of them, and our protagonist got pulled by the crowd and crashed to the duke and stumbled and ended up falling to the floor. When our protagonist thinking that they would laugh at her, the girl Sasha apologizes to her and help her, giving her her own handkerchief. Our protagonist thanks the girl, which the girl answered that she covered with tomato sauce, but it's unattishable thanks to her red hair. Our protagonist is confused. When the girl continue that since the tomato cannot hide the smell, she suggests to wash it off, then said farewell. Our protagonist feels sad after that, but in the end she left the party looking like a mess and expectedly no one care. She's in the room and thinking that this room isn't comfortable, and as she is illegitimate child, 
She don't have a room on her own like her brother and sister, and she's feeling down. Before sleeping, thinking she isn't welcome, a tefer falling asleep, her soul left and wander around in the palace and find a room. She feel that there's a force pull her feet and look around to find that force. Accidentally, she saw a bag and open it, but found a doll with sparkling eye. The doll has a golden fur and blue eyes. Just like the people in the empire, our protagonist thinks that this room must belong to a child, but confused since the doll is not something a child would want because of its old appearance. Our protagonist, feeling like the doll is alive, interestingly reach and touch the face of the doll. She is shocked when there's a glow and pull her inside, and in the teddy bear absorbed her soul. She doesn't know how this possible. Inside the teddy bear, our protagonist feeling uneasy that she seemed that she cannot go out in the doll's body. While make a noise that the owner of the room ask who's there, she frees hearing the man's voice. When she thought that child is the owner, when it's turned out it is the, the hero of Northern War, known as the Ice Wall, Duke Tamex Ludvillian.